Wait a couple more minutes to see if anybody else gets in. And then we'll just start on our little monologue and we'll go from there. I don't want to wait too long because it gets boring. You guys had a good day today? Hope it was well. Sandra. <laughs> nice of you to join us. Thank you. Thank you. Good, George. Well, that was good. Yeah, rain, Justin. You are not even joking. Oh my gosh. I am so done with rain. <laughs> Usually I love rain, but now all it does is like rain all the time. <laughs> it's crazy. here. Thank you all for showing up. Thank you all for joining. I really appreciate it. Brendan's here with me today because he wanted to go ahead and join me. <laughs> say hi, Brendan. Hello. <laughs> You're supposed to say hi, Brendan. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay. Hey, I may have to feel good. So. <laughs> so last week it was really, uh, really lighthearted just talking about traveling with our animals. We really enjoy that because as introverts, we like taking little pieces of home with us, places it helps us feel more comfortable. Just like we take our pillows, it helps us sleep, that kind of stuff. So today we're going to talk about what happens. A lot of times we go on these wanders and it doesn't always turn out the way that you think it's going to. So here we go. We recently visited Finley Park in Columbia. It's a beautiful park with many city areas where you can enjoy the breeze and the sunset while listening to squirrels scurry around across trees and the fountain splash the water on the man-made lake. Although it's cooler weather made for an excellent break from the heat and humidity of Charleston, we did run into some disappointments on this wander. So we chose this park specifically to see the waterfall fountain that they had created. We did some research before leaving, but during our digging, we didn't see that the fountain had been broken for about a year. So sometimes you can do all the research in the world, and when you get there, it's still not what you expect. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. That's part of the wonder of travel as well, though. Your eyes are open to how things really are. So that brings me to the second but different disappointment that we had during the research phase when we were looking at this, I saw comments that the homeless utilized the park also. And that doesn't bother me. I was homeless for a while. Not everybody who's homeless is like a crazy guy on crack or something like that. So it didn't really bother me too much. But when we got there, what I saw just broke my heart. But also in a way, it kind of revitalized, it kind of revitalized it too. So when you walk in the park, there's the expected local people, right? And the kids that are out playing who, you know, have nowhere else to go to play. And then we came to the second stage. There are two stages. They have one that's grass and they have one that's actually like a cement stage. And you could see at least two lines of people sleeping. They had that stage. like... By the state of their clothes and the bags they were carrying, 
you you could tell they've probably been homeless for a while. So while walking through, I also saw it looked like somebody who had recently been a vet scoping out a place to sit with his backpack and looked like he had some water. He's looking like he hadn't been he had been without a roof for a while. So we also saw homeless people kitty cat, stop it. Brr. <laughs> Come on, sir. <laughs> in the tree seating for the Grass Island stage. So these are really people who are, who've been touched by disappointment in some way. They either lost a job or they can't get the medication they need or something else. Something has happened to them and, and it has, has, they've lived through a disappointment in life. They've fallen on hard times and forgotten futures. So seeing them reminded me though that the human spirit, although crushed, can be revitalized when we help each other. So I was reminded that when you travel through this life, help your fellow man. You know, you may be going places and doing things and having an awesome time. There's always somebody out there who could use a little hand up, a little step up, even if it's just like a sandwich or a drink or something, do something. So don't be part of the disappointment that others go through, but instead be part of the rekindling of that human spirit that exists in us all. There's a few, there's several ways you can do this. You can do this by volunteering time or money or money to outreach programs. And through prayer, God can lead you to the right place. I think it's important to remember when we wander that disappointments are part of life. It's what we do about them that determines whether it's a lesson or a pit. And that's really all I had for today. So what do you guys think? When, when we go places and it's not exactly how I thought it was going to be, then oftentimes I can, I can get really frustrated because I'm like, man, I had it in my head exactly how I want this video to go or exactly what pictures I wanted to take. And now I have to change it all, which is not bad. It just gets a little frustrating because I just have a plan and I think that the plan is the best and everything else. So, <laughs> so uh, but when you get there, a lot of times what I have had planned, what ended up, what I ended up seeing was actually better sometimes. Or for example, with Finley Park, Finley Park is a beautiful place. And when I saw how they they made an outdoor amphitheater basically and what they do and what they did was they planted trees where you would sit so that you're shaded and it just looked magical like my imagination went crazy with that the um the amphitheater that we saw oh what was that uh, augusta that didn't have any covering right they had a covering like at the top or whatever, but this was just like the I'm, whole I'm, thing was covered. That was much nicer. It, it it was it was like much cleaner, much more modern looking. But I like the trees better because it just sent my imagination just whirling. Yeah. So, Justin, what do you think about traveling without a plan and find surprises? Uh, we've done that too. We've gone someplace and been like we don't we we do we've done zero research. We said two hours away, let's just get in the car and go. Reminds me of our first trip to Hilton Head. Exactly, our first trip to Hilton Head. <laughs> it's funny because this was before Google Maps was really any popular, before you could even get it on your phone. We printed out directions to Hilton Head because her grandmother's got a timeshare and figure, oh, let's go figure out how do we get there. So we just printed it out for Hilton Head. <laughs> and where did we end up? Right smack dab in front of a gated community. I was like, well, what do we do now? <laughs> So, so we found one of our favorite parks down in Hilton Head just by just getting a, a tourist map and just going. Yeah, it was awesome. Some of my favorite pictures come from that wander. We were just we were wandering around Hilton Head. We don't know where we're going. We get a map just on random and find this little park that you wouldn't have found unless you had a map or maybe you already knew where it was and that kind of thing. So I think that that is some of the best ways to build some of the best memories to just go. At the same time, when you do this though, you have to understand that it's not always going to be that way. <laughs> a lot of times you're going to go and it's going to be like, well, this is just grass. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's no there's no historical anything having to do with it there's no it's just a plot of grass and that's just kind all like it is Grandview Park Grandview Park yeah it it wasn't big it it wasn't exciting it's kind of nice because of the the angle that you get the angle that you get that you're on the Congaree River you just watch the river go by but yeah. Man, not exactly the safest spot in the world in Columbia. No, it wasn't, and it wasn't really, like you said, it wasn't safe, but it was beautiful. I mean, if they just put some more work into it, it would be even better. So that's what I think about that. Do you guys have anything you've ever done where you've done a trip like that? Do you guys always plan your trips? What do you guys say? So I think, I don't know, when, when we first, when I first started to need to travel, like I, I needed to do it, then I just told Brendan, get in the car, we got to go somewhere. <laughs> so where he basically took me was the beach. I mean, that's the edge of the world. And a lot of times you can also visit like the same things over again and have a totally different experience because something's changed or... You're there during a time when other people aren't, so there are more animals there. You get to see things other people wouldn't because it's calmer, it's quieter, and we like it better that way anyway. Being introverts, we're not really big on having a whole lot of people around. You know, when we hang out, we like one-on-one -on -one better than like a party. I get real awkward at parties, so it just depends on what you like to do. How do you like to travel? Do you want like the hotel with the bed, you know, the mint on your pillow and, and all this stuff? Or do you just want to go see nature and everything that you can see through nature? And I like both. You know, sometimes you, you want to wake up and sometimes you want to go into a room and there's a mint on your pillow. But a lot of times what I want to do, like for example with this cargo trailer, is you can open the back. And when you open the back, I just wanted to open up into the scenery and just lay on the bed frame that I'm going to make and look out and just have that as my television instead of like going someplace fancy. It's like we said, some of our best travel memories have been made places we didn't even know existed by making a mistake <laughs> and going somewhere else. And it wasn't fancy. We didn't. We didn't have any kind of, you know, we didn't have a plan, we didn't have a place to stay, none of that. It was just, we found it, and it was so cool. And sometimes, like a lot of times with me, I could be having the time of my life, but my face won't show it just because I'm tired or something like that. I, I have so much fun doing this travel thing. I have so much fun thinking about where am I going to go next and what am I going to show you guys and how can I improve all this so that you guys enjoy it as well as much as I do and you know I don't know everything but I can't wait to do more <laughs> I can't wait to show you like these uh, the other big thing I'm, I'm about is frugal travel so I can't wait to show you, like, you, you can go here, have a great time, have this great view, and it costs you next to nothing, and sometimes nothing. And that's something else we found, too, is a lot of times when you go places, it doesn't really cost that much to really have a nice view or a nice time. So, guys, if that's it, then uh, if there's no more comments or questions, then we'll close this out. Thank you all for joining us, and I will see you next week. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs>